All right, welcome back class. This segment of um, series three, painting the foggy marsh, we'll call it. Uh, definitely just finishing touches stage. I wanna repair some things that I missed. I wanna touch up the edges that I know are too sharp. Um, as a whole, this painting is almost finished. I mean, I could touch up a couple things and call it finished, but I would rather, let's, I wanna push it. Let's push it a little more. I feel like it needs to be pushed a little more. And that's the great big question, I think sometimes with art is, uh, when do I know when to stop, right? So when you know when you need to stop is, let's not overwork it. I'm not nearly overwork this by any means. I want to, I kind of always feel like I want a fresh quality about it and I don't want anything to be, and I want it to be complete in my mind. But if I overwork it, it starts looking stressed over. It starts looking, um, the movement of the painting and the rhythm of the painting starts to decline and I can feel it. Like it's more of an eternal clock that I go by. Uh, it but, starts looking more posed and less spontaneous. That's right, Sancho. That's a good, you're wise. That's why I have you as an assistant. Yeah. I'm here for you, Chief. Just like Sancho says, it starts looking more posed. The painting uh, um, almost starts feeling more like a still life and like having that actual movement, vibrancy that what drew us to the painting in the first place, uh, what we're trying to capture. Um, I didn't, I definitely didn't tell you what we are trying to capture in this painting. I want you to do that for yourself. So once again, we're doing this in this process on this video for you to really dive into yourself, really try to search those colors, really try to um, explore on your own. Because if you don't explore on your own a little bit, you're not going to grow. Um, just me mixing colors is not going to help you grow and you um, reiterating those colors because then you'll come back up to me and say, how did you mix that color? Which is a fine question to ask and you can always ask me that, but I want you to, I want to push you. Like I said earlier, a little bird in the nest since, it's, since the little chick chickens and the birdies are hatching, like let's, uh, let's get you out of the nest a little bit. Um, I have a small brush at the moment, which I might, uh, I know I had to mix the sky color again. And I don't know if I mixed it correctly, hadn't tried it, but what I want to try to attempt is sometimes when you're uh, having to go over edges or something, dark's always going to show up a little bit more. So I'll put that color on. I might even dab it a little bit just to get some of that paint off. And lightly uh, touch the painting. What I really want is I want that hay, I want the haze to start to fill in and I don't want it to be like too strokey. Sancho, is that a word? Of course it is, Chief. I feel like that's an 80s word for sure if there's any word for it. Strokey. It sounds like a uh, Eating. Don't Sorry. start in on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you had that illustrious surfing and snowboarding and skateboarding career. <laughs> you can even just dry brush the edges, wipe it off. Um, seems to be doing okay with me right now. I'm not really in, I typically don't like to just like dry brush, but times when you need it feel like it's helping us out feel like I can even come back in and create even more color I can even come back uh, let's, this time actually load up the brush with the sky color
lot of times with fog and haze like that, you'll see, um, maybe not so much with this one, but there is usually a coordinates of a little bit of stronger haze on the horizon, such as probably this area, but I definitely show you how to fix that if you get just some random dark mark up there. A uh, couple things I could do, I could dry off my brush, know that it's clean, or uh, like I don't want to like wipe, well, I don't want to wipe, wipe away, but I will show you like the dark, darkest part, like let's just try to take some of that off. Right, so I'm just trying to knock some of that dark, dark area off, or grab it off. And now I'm, that's bare wood and I can see the paint. I can see like, you know, that little thin layer of paint between here and what I just scraped off. But let's see if the color, this is a true test to, if you have something sort of a similar color, but you have painted thick, like I have painted, like you can, I would start above it, and that way you're dragging some of the paint that you had up there down with it. Now, the more paint that comes on here, I can tell right now, if I look at the tip of my brush, it's darker, so I can clean it off and do it again. Or I can load it up if you don't care that much. You can load it up, but uh, let's just say I do care because that looks really dark, doesn't it, Sancho? It did. Amazing. So now I've kind of, I do want, I really want this part to feel hazed out. Um, and I did add that dark there that I wasn't really truly meaning to of the lizard, the red. So can't you just paint some sky color over it? I can, but I'm really feeling like I can kind of come back in with a little bit of that color. Since I have more sky color, because that was thicker, I'm coming back with more of the warm color at this moment. My mind might change in a sec, and it probably will, if I'm allowed to do that. I don't like it that hazy or that strong because to me, like when I see that, I think more hills or mountains. Mm -hmm. Is that what you so Sancho agrees, so how do I fix that? Like one problem leads to another problem, but all painting is, is problem solving. And at the end of the paintings is when we need to like really tuck in and master all those problems. So I'm gonna go back in with the sky color that I had mixed and try to, just looking for a brush. Maybe go with a bigger brush because a lot of times too, oh, this is a gold nugget and I do it all the time. Wait a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you in this thing. All right, Sancho, gold nugget time. Uh, when you're at the ending stages, you always have a tendency to really be finesse and really even tackle your problems with some sort of finesse or some sort of delicacy um, because you don't want to ruin everything else, right? Well, I've always, always, always do this and I always would, and I would do it like I just did it and you saw me and I was trying to be all delicate and stuff and that's not the way to tackle it. The way to tackle it is to attack it. So you tackle by attacking. And now that I've kind of, you know, got maybe the color I want-ish, I might even throw some of that darker color in. I kind of liked it. It kind of popped a little bit. Um, 
but the point is when you're fixing things a lot of times like uh test it out but attack it because what's going to end up happening is you're going to go into that motion of refining everything and trying to make it perfect but then you're only making this one little area perfect and it shows like when you view the painting as a whole so i'm going to put uh, the sky color on this brush and hopefully it matches up. I think it matches up enough, but I am going to come back in and try to, maybe it needs to be a little bit lighter. And I don't mind, like, you know how I knock down the sky? I have that in my memory bank, right? I knock it down with just a dry brush. I knock the sky down. So a lot of that, and this is even a good lesson. Watch it, same, same color here that's going up and down, but I drag it sideways. Look at the difference. Like, I know you see it, right? On the camera, you got to, but if I have same colors on the left only lighter yeah and it's just uh further back like i said earlier about colors kind of like uh with the mouse feet footprints <laughs> as sancho pointed out uh you can throw in colors like i can throw in some more you know like more um there is more uh, you can throw in little bits i will in a second but uh, I don't think this isn't the brush to do it, but um, might be too much. If it's too much, I can sort of wipe off my brush, come back, in at it. Don't know if I like it. You might see my brush flick up there again, but for now, I feel like I saw well, I didn't solve it totally, but um, if I get a soft brush again, one of the things too is like there's a different transition now that I did tackle that area, right? And I was aggressive with the paint and the brush strokes, but I had laid down the paint in my sky. You want to hit that again. So like... Uh, you don't have to go all the way up, but like, you just want to knock down those areas that you just pushed up and forced out of place. Things are blurrier, foggier, hazier, so I should try to push that idea as well as I'm falling back into space. Like that shouldn't be like a pure, just um, shouldn't be a pure, just purple edge to the marsh. Because sharp lines pull it forward, right? Yes, that's right. Good job. 
Yeah, sharp lines pull it forward. So obviously, every oh, well, not obviously. I like to use that word, Sancho. It's I've noticed I have it's said that a bunch. That you do. It's obvious that I have. Yes. Uh, <laughs> What I do want to do now is kind of step away. I might even like, this is where also final touches, creative play comes to mind. How do I know? Like, uh, that's not a great color, but it's not awful either. But um, I'm probably using the wrong brush for this, but I could throw in so bad. I'm, see, see how you can get stuck on one you know, scenario and keep going over and over in your mind. This is when you take a deep breath and say, Stephen, you're good enough. And you got friends and people that love you. <laughs> and I'm going to rock this painting. I did put that online. This is going online. I can't believe I'm saying stuff like this. I almost liked it better before I didn't mess with it. using the edge of this brush to get some lines going You're going out. from top to bottom. Why not bottom to top? Uh, on, the, on, the, on the brushes. I think it's all about feel. Like, I, I feel like I can, uh, I feel like I can control a little bit better how I start, how light the brush touch, and then the touch, the feel of it first hitting the canvas is better than pushing up. Like if I push up, like I feel, well, I feel like I'm actually mm -hmm. dragging. Well, there I drug um, paint more than I actually produced out. But I think it's all about <clears throat> kind of touch. And for some reason, it, uh, paint drags a lot better than pushing. Mm -hmm. So, little mouse tracks <laughs> specifically for Poncho. Like a lot of times you want these reeds to be thinner than when they start out with, so it's, um, it's almost a good idea to like make sure your brush is at its thinnest if you're using a brush like this. And you can tap, barely tap, skip a beat, and hit it, and it actually makes it look thinner in the long run. Ah, I screwed that one up. It might be fixable later. That looks a little more like a cattail. It's a cattail. All right, so I'm not like, I want to push, I want to make this green feel like it is on top of the, um, the warmth of this marsh. So I want to try to get some of that green going, but I'm not like, when I talk about edges, like I don't like the, this edge, blurred edge right there is standing out to me.
feel like I talked too much, so I don't know how much time I have. I was fascinated, Chief. You're at 21. I can use a brush to make these lines. If I wanted to do something different, I can use my palette knife. What you do is you choose the color you want, you mix it up, that pile, you wipe the brush off, and you hit the edge of your pile and drag it forward. And if you can tell, like there's a clean line on one side. Mm -hmm. And all you do is you rest that side and you drag it, but you'll probably have to. Uh, I can hit it with the side, but I'll I'll go I'll turn my, the blade farther as it goes down. Closer, it starts out here, but then it it keeps raveling around. Okay, that's worth the price of admission. Because what you're doing is you're giving your eyes something to look at, but not over over overcoming your eye. That's awesome. Thanks, Sancho. Now, that's sort of a delicate procedure. Like, um, these hands should be for surgery. I'm just kidding. It, it really starts out like lay it down until you see it coming off. Like you don't want to do too much, too little. Um, but if you did have trouble with it, you can always come back with a clean brush and say like, um, you can drag the edge with it if it's too sharp. Sometimes they, they get too sharp. So I just soften that whole thing right there. Uh, you can get more paint on it. Say I wanted this stroke to actually be up here and I could hit or miss, like don't, it's better to have variety. It's better to have that upstroke and then some of the um, thinness of it. And then you could possibly, you know, do a couple mouse tracks with that. don't want to do too terribly many like um, are the same size like those two look a lot like the same you know smear one see if that works uh, you can switch out size of brush If you pick up other color like that, like you can go in, if you know it's darker, you can go into something lighter. It always works too. Like that's, I did three stripes and they all kind of look the same over there. So that's not a, something that I want and kind of on the same plane. That's too big of a stroke. And I don't want it to get too, um, too crisp back here. I want all my, all my, um, you want all your sharp lines up front, right? All my sharp lines up front. Good job, good job. Just coming in, I see I have some white showing from my canvas. I'm just clean brush blurring some of that. I don't like that orange back there. I feel like that's too 
things that I might want to tackle is um, real quick would be grabbing the sky color slightly again. What's up, you got balls? You're at 26 and a half. in the water, didn't it? Yeah, it was not so stiff, was it? You can, like, just uh, drag, kind of like how we did the ocean scene. Drag a little bit. And it'll drag some of that color out. Awesome. Want to clean up this area a little bit? Want to tackle that? And that's all I want to do. Um, I'm going to try to do that now. That's moving it back. A couple more things. I have a brush that's probably a little bit newer. I want to go into sort of that purple color that I was drawing with earlier. And really just like uh, reiterate some of these. I have some colored, like the warmth in here, I would say is warmer and more a little more colorful. But I can, I can kind of draw with my paint a little bit. to be light so you'll see me like start here I actually want to hit it sooner but um, I can even change color again maybe I'll change to a green real quick too much on there. Got another cattail. Another cattail.
You don't want to do too much to where it looks kind of hokey. So even even kind of coming back in with uh, some sort of uh, color sometimes and hitting it or even wiping away. Which I should have wiped my finger first again. Look at there. <laughs> hey, teacher never learns, does he? And I ran out of the uh, light blue, so I gotta mix it real quick. Um, I don't want it to use to like touch this up, but. Can break some of this up they don't have to be so sharp I can break it up blur it kind of go over it once I drop some of the color off my brush can come back in make some air holes in here gives it a little more um, intrigue of what's going on right in here so I don't need so much focus over here I can just kind of go, you can kind of rub the brush back over lightly of what you've done. It'll fade it in. And then once you have sort of a dry brush, you can, you can fade it in more. So like soft, a little bit of hard, a little bit of intrigue, and then you're led back to beyond the beyond, right? Like notice like my finishing touches aren't like really like I'm not really transforming anything. I'm just adding or enhancing on what's on top of what I have. If you find yourself just completely like pulverizing what you're doing, then maybe you need to like stop and reevaluate what you are doing with on um, the topic of finishing. Does that make sense, Sancho? Sure does, because what you're doing is putting in things for your eye to slow down on. It's, you want it, the painting ends up taking its own personality. So at some point you have to go with what you have and what you're seeing and take the, what you're seeing as a reference, but the painting becomes a life of its own. Um, and you have to go with what your painting needs because you have so much paint down that you're maneuvering around Follow, follow what's happening. Don't um, try to force a lot more than you need to. So right now I feel like um, probably almost done. I feel like I'll call this, I don't know why I'm going up like it's a heel or something. Why'd I do that, Sanche? Looks good, Chief. Okay. Well, we'll call this later. I might touch it up later, but um, class, please call me for any questions.